Hey, this is Uthrus, and we are back in Scrap Mechanic, driving around on our DeLorean here. And I have made some upgrades in between episodes, so uh, I'm showing this off first a little bit. It was requested to actually make it fly, and it can kind of do that now. Um, so I'll go ahead and show that off. The wheels will fold down. We will fly into the air for a little bit. It's more like a, a little hop more than anything. I don't really have any directional control on this thing. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, get on flat ground for a second here. And then boost, fold our wheels under, and you can see we are a uh, flying DeLorean at this point. We are moving forward, but we're pretty much gonna gain height at this exact angle until we hit the roof. But I don't wanna do that. So we are going to come on down and we're going to land beside the thing that we're building this episode. This episode we are building the X-Wing from Star Wars. Now I know it's pretty stereotypical, but trying to get this thing to fly a little bit kind of inspired me to do something a little bit more grand. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pan my camera angle. You can see it parked over there and it does fly. It does, uh, well, when I say fly, I mean more like fall with style in a sense. It's not really the most elegant thing in the world. Let's hop out of the DeLorean and uh, put some stuff away. There we go. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I hope you guys are pretty excited to see the speed build of it. That's pretty much what we're going to jump to right about now. All right, so we're gonna start here with uh, the basic outline and foundation, of course, for the X-Wing. And you can see I'm fiddling here with trying out a system of movement. And so I'm trying the sensory kind of setup here initially um, to, it's going to control our roll and pitch. I'm not gonna have yaw on this vehicle in the long run because I felt like maybe it wasn't gonna be large enough to include something like that. So yaw and pitch was about all, in my opinion, that I needed. Uh, so testing out uh, these medium tanks as just a temporary placement for kind of the the joins of the X, uh, where, the, where the wings actually link up. And then at this point, you know, it's, it's gonna go, there's, there's a lot of flight testing in this. Um, you, you need to make sure, you know, the weight isn't going to be an issue. I don't want to get too detailed too quickly and then just just have the thing not fly. And then in which case, the whole design is broken. Now also, you'll see that really at this point in time, there, there's so much testing going on because I'm trying to get the, the lift uh, kind of pitch up, pitch down to work and seeing if I can get that to work with just the engines on the back because having wings on it really doesn't add anything but weight. And so I'm trying to see if I can just get it to work like that. And as you can see, we're having a lot of trouble. You know, I don't have a roll yet. So even if I pitch up into the sky, I can't do anything but pitch back down. I can't control it in any way. And you'll see in the final version that we actually have kind of some underneath uh, thrusters here to, uh, basically help with just almost hovering, but they're not really strong enough to make us hover. They're just there to assist with basically a, a fake version of lift. And they're pretty much always constantly on. You can do some cool things if you turn off those thrusters and then just rely on the back thrusters and your pitch and roll. Uh, it, can, it can behave rather natural once you have enough height, but if you're low to the ground, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend taking things a lot more slow uh, than than when you're actually flying the thing around. So again, this is made out of wood. I'm testing out different pipes uh, to maybe use. I was testing out this one because the grate on it kind of looked like the the, the ventilation for the X-Wing. And so I was like, okay, well that looks right. So I'll, I'll use that for now. And we'll work on some other minor details like the back end here using some air conditioning units some wooden boxes just to give give uh, some, some layers of detail at this point. And then of course, I was like, well, how heavy are these pipes? Is it gonna affect the flight, you know? I don't know, so more testing with that. And then of course, like we did with the hood of the DeLorean, I actually angle using uh, rotors here 
uh, the front end a little bit. Now, the way an X-Wing angles, it angles in two stages, and really it's a bit of a problem in scrap mechanics to do something like that. I'm not 100% fine with how it turns out in the final version, but it, it works well enough. And here, we're adding the cockpit in here. Uh, we're trying to work on the hinge for the, the door opening. And then, of course, if you, if you look at it, if or depending on how quickly this is playing for you all, but you can always pause it. The, the back end is rather high compared to the real X-Wing, and so what I have to end up doing is reworking that that whole mechanism anyways to try and get it uh, to be a little bit more usable. And then at this point, we're just going to bulk up the body, try and come up with the final width of things. I'm trying to throw in these details in the middle just so I can get more of a feeling of how the thing's going to come together because, you know, it, it is a, an ever-growing process. When you're, when you're working on something from a movie or anything like that, you, you really want to get the basic shape down and some minor details just so you can use it as a measuring stick and then go back in and clean everything up. And that's definitely what we end up doing in this case. The finished product looks drastically different than it does now and really if, if you guys are building your own things and you're getting frustrated early on, it's fully understandable. Uh, but but stick through it and, and, and really see it through fruition because that's when you're going to find that it, it makes the most sense and is the most enjoyable. Just keep tinkering with it. I mean, at some point, maybe take a break, build something else, and come back to it with some fresh eyes. That's always a good thing to do, especially um, you know in the art world. That's what we did a lot. Uh, you know, just walk away, come back. And here, I noticed those tanks, well, the X-Wing, they actually move with the wings. And so I'm actually having to make a mechanism to attach the tanks to, and then we'll attach the wings onto the tanks. So the whole thing moves up and down like it should. And yeah, you guys can't see me right now, but I'm flapping my arms like a freaking chicken. Because <laughs> I'm just talking into a microphone. This is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Like... To think that I sit here and and I, I make some cool things for you guys to look at and hopefully be inspired, and I talk to a microphone at 11 o'clock at night. It, it's weird. Uh, anyways, uh, here's the first wing going on. We uh, I angled the front and back end of it just to try and make it a little bit more pointed. Uh, the the X-wing has a rather kind of just flat solid piece but I found that to be a little too boring so I angled the front and back end of the, the uh, wing there to try and uh, make it look a little bit more fancy. Here I end up messing with the cockpit some more just because I noticed how bulky the back end is and in doing so basically what happens is I accidentally cut the thing off. Um, that happens when you're building a scrap mechanic. If, if you fiddle with something too much uh, and trying to get it perfect, you're, you're going to accidentally lose a chunk and you're just going to be a little depressed by it. And there it goes. So it was off to the side now. And I basically had to re rebuild the whole thing from scratch. And then at that point, I was like, well, at this point, we can just go ahead and raise the back end to make it match relatively, just so it's a little bit more sleek. Add some piping in, which will eventually color gold, which looks pretty cool. Having this, uh, this really dark gold in, in, in the pipings and some circuitry really makes it look like Star Wars in my opinion because that's kind of a color palette they used regularly especially back then in, in the 70s fantasies um, even like if you look at like Frank Pizzetta pieces uh, he's using that kind of yellowy gold a, a whole lot so the cockpit's taking shape again of course using rotors to get the angles right and making sure stationary rotors are set to a stationary uh, non-moving controller so that that basically just holds pieces in place that you need to be held in place and then you have other controllers manage the moving parts uh, don't try and get to everything on one controller it's really not worth your time and makes it a little bit too confusing added the front thrusters again on the front end now because the the hood is kind of angled again um, this is actually a little bit of an issue with the thrusters because when we thrust the hood is going to vibrate a little bit um, once once there's some more weight on there it gets kind of fixed and straightened out but that in the long term becomes a little bit of a problem for us uh, the speed build itself you know this is about two hours or so of work and then there's going to be a pretty big time skip 
uh, between here and actually showing off the final version just because getting the flight mechanics to work I tried many different versions and ended up having to settle on some things that I didn't want to do uh, but you know for, the, for just the sake of trying to get the thing done and, and, and uploaded you know I, want, I wanted to do this the other day but obviously you know I, don't, I didn't have time to finish it. it it was quite the complicated build and I didn't expect it to be um, I really expected to just kind of breeze through it after working on the DeLorean for like 20 minutes uh, to get that to fly. Uh, and, and I was like, oh, tackle the X-Wing. That'll be great. No problems there. And it became a, a two-day journey down uh, rocketry because there's no flight mechanics at all. And just getting that to, to work was a big challenge, but it, it's worth it. It's worth it in the long run. And I hope you guys kind of enjoy it. Uh, some final testing just flipping around here um, just making sure the lift isn't too heavy on the nose because if you, if you pitch up too quickly you're gonna lose control and so uh, you, you want to do everything in increments and in, in a very controlled manner for these type of things uh, adding the first guns on there you know on the tips of the wings looks pretty cool using piping near the wing tip and then we're gonna narrow down into the steel tube and then put uh, some finishing details near the edge there as you can see and this thing will be painted up and uh, test flown many many times in its current state even adding some extra boosters so uh, it can make sure it has enough power to actually do what it needs to do. Balancing all those thrusters was a little bit of a chore. So, hope you guys enjoyed the speed build. Alright, so, after all that talking and explaining just about nothing it feels like, I'm going to go ahead and take this thing for a little bit of a spin. But first, we'll take a nice kind of look around so you guys can kind of see all the final details. Uh, so, obviously, I'm using wood to keep this thing light, so we need less thrusters. Uh, there's not really anything I can do about that. It's, it's just kind of what we had to do to make it work. I'm using wheels for the vent coverings here, and that turned out pretty nice, I think. Uh, the blasters are nice and folded up. Uh, there are extra engines, and that's because the thing is still that heavy. Uh, without these extra four engines, I would not be going anywhere. Here's a glimpse of the back end, kind of the, this golden painted area. We have the landing gear. The landing gear actually fold up back here and everything and kind of tuck away. So they're, they're pretty sleek and hidden. We will also, in fact, I'm going to hop in this thing real quick. Let me crawl underneath, open up thing there and hop in. I will also, I guess, we can fold down the landing gear real quick just so you guys can get a nice look of the sleek kind of design once it's all folded up. Also, if you press 3, I need the landing gear deployed for this, you can see the wings actually expand. Uh, the up ones are a little bit heavy so they don't really lift up very well, uh, otherwise they would be matching the lower to make it a little bit more of a wide X, but uh, that's pretty much the limitations of having a single bearing trying to lift up that large kind of plate there. Yeah, the, the details overall look really good. It's nice and sleek. I enjoy it. Obviously, we are part of Red Squadron. Uh, some golden, golden accents on the wings as well. Kind of wish we had blasters that would actually fire. That'd be so cool. And so we're going to go ahead and take this thing for a spin. Note, I am terrible at flying this thing. It does not fly very well. And it's going to be rough. So essentially how it works is I have some thrusters down at the bottom here. That's going to try and, of course, get us started off the ground. As you can see, it keeps this kind of angle consistently so we can try and gain altitude really quickly. As the higher you are, the better chance you are at not crashing. Also, you'll see these springs. Now springs, you ask. We don't have a suspension. Well, this is actually important. Um, I actually press W here. And S and, yeah, W and S 
and you can hear the sensor. And those springs were actually called torque. Almost like a gyroscope if you think like uh, space engineers or something. And that will actually propel us to do things. So um, it's pretty a cool feature. It's a little bit of a glitch. It's using a spring and then you attach a block to it. And the spring, because it doesn't weigh anything, uh, basically the torque kind of wrenches really hard on it and forces the object to, to uh, move in the direction that it's hitting. We also have some examples here on the wings. If I turn right, this right side will actually push up into that wing, causing it to kind of grab and bank to the right. If I push left, that left block will bank and cause us to go left. So it does control with just W, S, A, and D. And obviously once we get the rocket started, we'll be in the air. So here we go. We're gonna activate the back thrusters. I'm gonna lower the landing gear and uh, off we go. Now it's going to try and climb fairly quickly. And I'm gonna be pretty much fighting this thing going forward in the air to try and get it to level out and keep a good height. But look at it. It looks so cool. And, it, and it's like the proper scale, in my opinion. Uh, it fits the scale of the world and uh, we're shooting for. Now, if you bank too hard, obviously uh, that is going to happen. We're going to be kind of pulling up quickly to try and turn and uh, cut speed as our wings really are just dead weight. Uh, it is more reminiscent of, say, a rocket ship than anything else right now. Okay, so let's see if we can't save it there. Not bad, not bad, and we're gonna crash. We're gonna crash in the trees. Oh, okay, and we are officially Luke Skywalker. And landed. See, perfect. Exactly what I wanted to show you guys. <laughs> Nothing went wrong at all. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this look at the X-Wing and Scrap Mechanic today, go ahead and leave a like. Leave a comment down below if you guys have any suggestions on what I should build next. I'm thinking an A-Wing. Might as well keep the Star Wars thing going. And uh, I'll see you guys next time in some Scrap Mechanic.